We are recording right now. So here I have my friend Kyle Col- Kyle Colorado with me. I habitually have been messing up everybody's names. That's in my so podcast, funny. But it's not even my like birth name. Did you know that? I was gonna ask you. I'm like, your name is too perfect for like yeah. com- comedy. I'm like, did you create that name? Or it, it's a uh, it's my wife's last name. Oh, so so you actually took her name? Yeah, I took her name in. Uh, not all. It's I'm hyphenated. Okay. Because um, my name is Kyle Groom. There's a comedian called Kyle Grooms, 25 year veteran from New Jersey, mm-hmm. born in the town I live next to right now. He's black. There's the difference. Um, <laughs> but yeah, also better than I am. So, <laughs> and I've gone to open mics and shows, and people are like Kyle Grooms. I go, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah, what that's... you expect is a 25 year black veteran. You're going to get a two to one year maybe and a really white dude yeah. a, so that's the difference no i guess th- i was gonna say that's a really like i love i, I do love my last name Pranzatelli, yeah. and i feel like it is a good like comedian or uh, music performance name um so it would be hard for me to like if i get married i think it would be hard for me to take somebody else's last name but that was actually a bold move on your case <laughs> because whatever you want to do this other guy's already yeah exactly <laughs> it, it, it was name. kind of, it was kind of made for me before i even started and i even knew him because uh, I don't know, the MySpace age. So oh. <laughs> he reached out to me and he's like, cool name. I guess he was just trying to do that thing when we're comedians in the, yeah. in the early 2000s found MySpace. And we're like, I'm just going to reach out to fans. And he's just like, here's this, guy, here's this kid with the same name from the same state that I yeah. live in. And I was like, cool job. Because that's I knew that I wanted to do that. I didn't do it for very many, very many years until yeah. then. But I was like, so I knew that walking in. So I kind of yeah. let the first two years because it happened this year where I changed it yeah uh, I allowed myself to be Kyle Groom and now I'm just like ah, I have shed that personality same jokes but like I've shed that like name and yeah your wife really hooked it up though because Kyle Colorado I was like that is a good stage name yeah. like it's like one that you can't forget what? it's almost like a porn star name but like <laughs> that has been said to me <laughs> I, I I did a whole thing when I was like letting people know I was starting my comedian Instagram under mm-hmm. my under my stage name and I wrote that, like, yes, it's being referred to as a porn name. And then my sister in law's like, why'd you say it's a porn name? <laughs> and I was like, it's just, it's the double con, it's the, what's it called? The alliteration between the two. And she's like, to be fair, my name is Giselle Colorado. I also, <laughs> she's, that is def- that's like a stri- totally a stripper name, Giselle yeah. Colorado. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to start this podcast off with some questions. Um, but before I get into questions about you as a comedian, yeah. I wanted to start every podcast with questions totally unrelated to comedy or anything, just as a little icebreaker. Uh-huh. So my first question for you is, are there any sounds that irritate you? Like some people, it's the chalkboard or is there, is there any you sounds know, that disgust it did, you? It didn't start off that way, but actually writing on chalkboard really like just it hits that. But I don't, you know, I went to school throughout the years when chalkboard was still very much in use <laughs> didn't bother me and then i don't know something about it just like it really like just like all the hits all, your, the nerves yeah, in your neck all or the, all the hairs in the back of the neck stand up like it used to be balloons when i first started but that doesn't work yeah it doesn't work anymore <laughs> i go i turn to a kid i'm like you're annoying everyone else yeah. but me i'm okay so just so everybody knows he's a balloon artist yes balloon so balloon he artist can't, he can't I'm, not like the sound of balloons at i this don't want to say balloon sculpture because that's too like hoity-toity for yeah. me <laughs> that's like well, when bartenders are like um what's mixologist. The, mixologist yeah i had a, I, I wrote a joke about that i on. think you did i've heard that before and then i saw you wrote a joke about it i was like that yeah. is so true <laughs> yeah it's just the 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 joke goes um Mixologist is just a fancier way of saying bartender. Yeah. Like uh, saying I'm in between jobs is fancier than saying uh, broke in boxers in bed at noon or something like that. (laughs) I remember that. Um, So my next question for you, along with sounds, are there any words? Like some people are like, ooh, I can't stand. Like my sister hates the word pus. She hates the word pus. Are there any words that make you aggravated no nothing really makes me nothing that i can think of off the top of my head that makes me go compared to like where i saw with the uh the the chalkboard sound no i i i like to abuse those words that people don't like (laughs) um there was one that i remember that both me and my um you know my now wife were just like that's a weird way to use it it was in that movie fright night that came out it was it was with anton yelchin and had Uh uh-huh and it was colin farrell as a uh, vampire 
Oh. And he used the word ripe to refer to a woman. And we're just like, that's not oh. the end. Like, it doesn't work out. Too. It's just like that, that word will not bother us forever. But in yeah. this context, ooh. it's a little like pedophile ish or a little. Rape-ish. I think that's what they yeah. were going for. And they nailed it. So. Yeah. so my next question for you is if there was a um, documentary being produced about you right now at this point in your life, what would the theme song, because I, I can't say the theme song of your life because mm. life is always changing, but if it was like right now, now a snapshot of you, what of would like your Of like where I'm currently song? at. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a, uh, man, I wish you would have pre-gave me that one because that feels, <laughs> that feels, that feels like that's I'm like now, ma- not only is it like, I have to think about it, now I'm also making a statement like yeah. this is who I am right now. Well, okay, if it's that intense, it could even be of the day. Of the day. It doesn't have to be of the, the spot you are in your life, or it could be of the day or the week. I will say when I walked outside and it was like 60 degrees, uh, Mr. Blue Sky by ELO popped in oh, my head. Oh, nice. I love ELO. Yeah, ELO. yeah so oh. I think that would be the for today. Yeah. Thank you for like narrowing it down. I was like, <laughs> I was like Ooh, maybe it's been it's been a lot going on. In the- <laughs> Some of my favorite like podcasts, I love the Whitney Cummings podcast. I don't know if you're a like, fan good, of Whitney Good for Cum- you. Yeah. yeah. So she has like um, regular questions that she asks the guests. I don't know if I'm going to use these questions as my regular questions because I'm like, I need to see like kind of what's fun. But if it's like too intense, I'm like, maybe I won't do that one, but we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that I, you know, <laughs> maybe some people won't overthink it like I yeah. will. You know, that's that's a, that's a real possibility. I'll but give it a couple tries and yeah. see how oh, it goes. Oh, for sure. It's, you're trying things out and trying to see what sticks and that's the only thing you can do yeah. right now. But okay, those are all my questions as for my fun questions, but I'm going to play around with that and come up with other fun questions. So now I have questions for you as a comedian. Wonderful. So first I want to say I'm so happy to have you have you here today because I don't think I would have started comedy without your help and assistance. You were so kind and so generous. Can I also say, and I don't mean to interrupt, sure. um, is that, I mean, I do mean to interrupt because I'm interrupting, <laughs> um, but it was so nice because like I said, I started my comedian podcast, I comedian uh, Instagram yeah. and you're like you just reached out like I see that and it was just like someone's reaching out to me about comedy who doesn't know me and they want to talk about comedy it was like a really like oh this is a good that's why I like unloaded on you with all that information I wasn't like ex- and I was happy about it. it wasn't like unloading in a bad thing I was like wow this is a really nice generous person because I was like I finally had the courage to um, I've been thinking about doing comedy for like a, excuse me <laughs> the beer yeah for like a year <laughs> now and um I was like, finally worked up the courage to do it and there's a pandemic. And I'm yes. like, okay, well, I'm ready to do it, but I have no idea how to find out how. So I was like Googling like, okay, where can I do stand up? And the only place I know of was a stress factory in um, near Rutgers in New Brunswick. So I was like, I don't know what to do. So my next bet was like, let me just see people in the New Jersey comedy scene. And I'm not sure how I found you exactly. I think I just like searched up hashtag comedy mm-hmm. and you came up and I was just like, let me just re- like me- like randomly message this person. And uh, it was just, you gave me so much information and you hooked me up with that um, New Jersey comedy thing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think I would have found all this. Like, yeah. Well, you know? it's one of those things that I've said and it's one of those things that you don't realize where comedy is happening until yeah. you get all this information. Yeah. You, you find these sources, of, at least in this state. I, I, it's hard. It, it kind of exists in a almost Harry Potter-esque way where just like <laughs> everything exists and it seems normal on the outside yeah. and then you turn a corner and you have to say a weird word to someone you're like, oh, yeah. there's this whole other world that's opening up to me right now. And not only that, but like one thing led to the next because it was like, okay, now he's led me to all these people and then I started following your friends. Like, yeah. th- like I just like followed all your friends on um your Instagram that looked like comedians and then it, lo and behold, like this person has a uh, open mic in their backyard and yeah. this one knows about this open mic. So I'm like, okay, I don't, I was like checking stress factory every week. Like, are they open yet? And I'm like, this isn't going to work. No, no. And they out. haven't opened yet. They opened up their tent outside for shows. I yeah. went to Mark Norman over the weekend for, Oh, he's so good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, yeah, I'm, I'm at that point where I went enough and it was the first time I actually tried where they're like, yeah. come on back, hang out in the back. You get, you, you get just to hang out for free. Yeah. Uh, that was the manager. The Vinny brand, the owner doesn't oh, recognize yeah. me. He came up. I was like, what's your name? He's like, Kyle. It's like, are you a comic? I'm like, yeah, I've been here a couple of times. And immediately he walked away and was fine with it. He's but pretty he, cool. Yeah, he's a, f- I mean, um, uh, I'm friends with his daughter. Um, I didn't know he had a daughter. That's yeah, cool. yeah, he has a whole family. I don't, yeah. I don't want to get into a blow up her spot because she doesn't like to go by that last name. So yeah. I'm just friends with the daughter. That's what yeah. I'm going to leave it at. That's awesome. Um, my next question for you are, is what, when, when you started, when you decided you wanted to start comedy, uh, why? Like, what influenced you to start comedy? This is a longer answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like I said, I knew I wanted to do comedy pretty early on, but I just didn't have, I guess, 
my confidence in myself. I spent a lot of my 20s just doing things and not really being like, this is where I want to do. It just, it's just what, what happened. I mean, I literally fell into doing balloon animals for kids because I worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. I was heavily involved in the ska scene in New Jersey, just as like a uh, just a participant, not so much a uh, person who's putting out the, the music. And one of my favorite local bands, uh, the guy, his the lo the lead singer. We ran into each other. We kind of knew each other a little bit. But he asks, "Hey, what do you do for work?" It was like Christmas time, and we were both out with our girlfriends at the time. And I go, "Oh, I work at Chuck E. Cheese." And then everyone has that normal follow up question, and I'm like, "Yes, I'm Chucky." And yes, <laughs> I've been told I'm the best one on the East Coast. <laughs> and he's like, "I work for a company that does like children's entertainment, and we need people to go into costumes because no one likes to go into costumes. Yeah. What would you rather do? Stand outside?" in your own body or inside a essentially stuffed toy for yeah. four hours no one wants to do that yeah. but i already had that experience i was like <laughs> and i also was broke so i was like yes let me do that F and then he knew how to make balloons he taught me how to do balloons that's how i'm into balloon i didn't go searching for it it fell on me i know yeah i know what you mean that's kind of like um my background when i first started doing things like i've been all over the place with career i actually have a bachelor's degree in spanish which like is like so random yeah. because i don't do anything with it right now <laughs> i could use that because i'm in a spanish-speaking family and are you I really speak spanish so are you part spanish or no i'm sorry when i say i'm in i oh, married, married i married a into a spanish and her last name's colorado Lotto. yeah interesting yeah yeah don't don't know how that one i mean i guess out. ado ado is yeah. like a spanish so that yeah. actually does make sense but i just think of it as like the state the state but of course it is like yeah um technically ado would be like a spanish language thing yeah. but that's really interesting um, but yeah, I've had the same experience as you is that it took me kind of too late in life and too expensive in life to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Cause I'm yeah. like, Oh, I'm in my twenties. Like the way you figure out what to do is by like buying all these college degrees <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like accruing student loan debt, you know? Um, but, um, yeah, but anyways, go on with your story. Yeah. Sorry. I kind of got off on the balloon part and, <laughs> but that's, so I, that's just, demonstrating that's i fall into i would fall into things but comedy was always something that i really enjoyed watching comedy i mean one of the first things i remember and it's unfortunate now because of how times have t turned out for this particular yeah. person one of the first things i remember watching was with my grandma was bill cosby himself oh yeah it's a good special <laughs> but boy it is hard to watch now um so I've always enjoyed it, but I've only ever watched specials. Mm -hmm. You know, I only saw the end product mm -hmm. essentially, and I was like, "Ah, hey, you know, it's hard." You know, I knew that like this, like you, I'm like, I think I could do it, but like they're doing it at a different level than yeah. I can. So finally, I around 2018, uh, actually tw end of 2017, I was following this comedian, Chris Gethard, from New Jersey. Uh, he has like he had like a public access show, yeah, and he had a and he had a whole fan group around it uh on facebook called geth heads mm -hmm. and someone in the group posted about having a improv group starting in asbury park mm -hmm. and i lived in eatontown which is then like two towns over and i was like i've been wanting to do improv for so long mm -hmm. but it was so prohibitively expensive i couldn't yeah. it was like 400 dollars for just like one class and then you have to take like five classes and yeah so so they're like no the the whole thing was just like we're starting it it's going to be a, a thing where you can join if you have all the improv experience or none mm -hmm. of the improv. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I want to do. I looked into the person who posted it. I'm like, they're also a stand-up. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's an open mic in Asbury Park. Mm -hmm. Let me go run over there, introduce myself So yeah. before our first meeting so they know who I am. Mm -hmm. And I, forgot, I finally got to see open mic comedy. I go, mm -hmm. oh, I can do that. Yeah. And then I tried and I couldn't, yeah. but I thought I could. And that was enough to get me going. And I was like this. And I was able to do my first set. I did it at the Brighton Bar in Long Branch. Mm -hmm. And it was enough to get me going. And mm -hmm. I got a one or two laughs. I was like, that's it. This yeah. is this is what I'm going to do. So. so who are some of your comedy influences? Comedy influences. Um, I will say probably early on, I remember watching a lot of the uh, Comedy Central Presents so I remember seeing sets from like Jim Gaffigan, um, you know Gabriel Iglesias, um, even even some early Bill Burr stuff, and oh, I didn't Bill even Burr is awesome. I, and I didn't even realize like Mark Maron was on there because yeah. this was like before he would turn into who he is currently. Yeah. But then I would say in like 2009, the early two, you know early aughts, I guess we're now calling them. Um, 
uh, John Mulaney started mm-hmm. to pick up on, and that's really like when he came out with his special new in town, mm-hmm. someone actually reintroduced me to John Mulaney after seeing his Comedy Central Presents, mm-hmm. and he has one of, the, one of the funniest jokes I think I've ever heard was his salt and pepper story from his very first album, and I was like, oh, this is kind of, I feel like there's like a kindred spiritness to yeah. it. Where I don't think now I'm like at the time I think that was more the case. Now I'm like I'm not quite there, but I, there's there's some parts where I'm like yeah, there's a little bit of John Mulaney, you know, where that where that was part of my influence. But I think that's probably one of the big ones. And then since then, I don't know. The, right now, I would say Mark Norman's kind of like my guiding light at the moment. Would you say you prefer more of like a clean act, like non cursing, or are you okay with cursing, or does it not really matter to you? It doesn't matter to me. I just want to be funny, but I also don't want to be like I love David Tell, but mm-hmm. I just like that's something that's like his lane, yeah. and there's very few people who can do that. I think as successfully as he can, and I think that's like the one end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Whereas I also really enjoy like Nate Bargatze, who is super clean but mm-hmm. super interesting in his joke construction and the way that he gets to his punchlines. Yeah. And I really like that and something that um I would I would like to go but also I have so this is scattershot cuz I'm thinking like 15 things all at once. Um <laughs> I'm the same way. I get like scatterbrained <laughs> where I'm like, "Oh, this one thing leads to the next." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're just like, "But oh, and then like as which you're talking about it, there's like this light like don't forget to talk Which I guess is something me. like a skill that you have to rein in as a comedian yeah. because I've noticed some comedians that like open mics like there needs to be some type of structure in the for way sure they're speaking because if they start rambling it's like wait my brain can't like follow what's going on exactly you know I mean? which not is not that you're like that no, but i'm just like no no no, no. that's it's different it's different when it's a conversation yeah compared to what i've decided to say for the evening yeah um but you're right there's people and i'll do that where i'm like oh, i didn't really get to write but i have some premises and i'll figure it out and, and i go oh and man like, i can't do this yet know. yeah that's why, like, in the beginning of the phase of me doing comedy, I've been writing everything out because yeah. I'm, like, I'm not comfortable enough yet to just, like, go on stage mm-hmm. and just, like, start talking without having a plan in mind. But there's been, like, one or two times where I kind of sloppily wrote something out where I was, like, oh, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm yeah. doing good now. And then I'm just, like, shit. Like, I don't know how to word, like, to phrase yeah. this. But I guess that's all part of the process. It is. Like, and and as someone who's only, you know, two and, two and a half years in, and obviously this one year has been a little weird, um, uh, it's it's easier sometimes you know especially when you're doing well i yeah. i wrote like i wrote a line on stage because it was thrown back to me by like a friend in the audience yeah. and i was just in the pocket you know yeah. to use i played bass so i know what that is um, oh, i didn't know you're a musician as well oh i have a lot <laughs> yeah, well. um um yeah, so I just felt in the and I just threw out a, like they threw something back at me, and then I was able to like take that and then push it back out for yeah. a line that just like popped in the quote unquote room outside in the that's, back patio. Yeah, that's good. It's yeah. good when things happen in the moment like that. It feels like um, you're in tune with that. Your yes. antennas are out and you're Th- taking that's exactly in, you what know it what is. Mean? What you were thinking. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna ask you something else too, but I forget now. Because I got all in the <laughs> <No>. pocket. <laughs> no. Oh, I was. I had a good question for you. What the heck? Uh, well, while I'm thinking of the question, yeah. do you have a question for me? Yeah, I have a couple things because. Because I know you said that, so I'm like, I don't want to waste time. Like. No, 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 yeah. not a problem. Um, yeah, because I was also. What, what were your comedic inspirations when you started? Because you, I, I don't. You know, you you were into music. I I was going over everything all over yeah. again this morning. Was like you were going through. Um, you know your own journey into music and yeah. where but you also were like oh i wanted to write comedy and you spent a year writing comedy which i spent a month doing it i <laughs> saw it, i saw it at the end of december or december i spent a whole month just going to two open mics that were in my area yeah. and i was like all right i'm gonna do it and i then, really should have done it sooner um because i felt like i was like waiting for the perfect time to mm-hmm. do it and then what ended up happening was the perfect time ended up being a pandemic, pandemic. so i'm like i really wish i just uh did this earlier but everything has its own timing of course and yeah. maybe it's meant to be but what were who were my influences so i actually never um when i was younger i never saw comedy at all oh, this is like a new thing that happened within the past like two years um I think I did like see, actually I, that's all I I did see one comedian with my parents once like they took me to see some political comedian mm-hmm. they're like my parents are very democratic so they, I don't even remember the name and, and I remember being like too young to understand politics so I yeah. was really bored so yeah, yeah. that wasn't like my influence um, but um, I think I told the story on my YouTube and I might edit this out if it's like too <laughs> offensive but 
Robbie here, you yeah. know, who lives with me, um, we were smoking marijuana together. As and, you do. <laughs> <laughs> as we do. And I get really paranoid when I smoke. So mm-hmm. I only smoke it like once a year because I don't have the same reaction that everybody else does. And I don't, I don't understand why I would like to. But like once a year, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot and see how I do this time. Um, and this, and so, you know, me, him and his brother were smoking and it didn't work out again. I started to get really paranoid and I was like laying in my room and I was like, okay, I need to calm down. And he was like, here, watch this comedian. And that was my first introduction. So it was the Joe Rogan story. It was the, yeah. I was doing my research again. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, he showed me Joe Rogan. Once I found out Joe Rogan, I didn't immediately go to comedy. I went to his podcast. Got and then it. when I went to his Podca- podcast, comedians. I met the comedian, not Makes met sense. them, but uh, learned no, about the comedian. You met them in a yeah. way, you know, <laughs> the, not physically, but you know. They, yeah. And then like from there, I don't know, my whole life was just music, music, music. Like um, one thing that's been on my mind a lot lately is the fact that um, doing too much of the same thing can kind of take away from the passion because Mm -hmm. like I teach music, I study music, like I went to school for music. And I think sometimes like teaching and performing music kind of makes it feel like now your passion is a job. Yeah, So 100%. You know what I mean? It would be like if you were a balloon artist and then you performed balloon art and then yeah. you studied balloon art. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, um, you know, so I kind of feel like I need to um, re-fall in love with music, if that makes any sense. That so, does make sense. Um, kind of falling in love with comedy was like a refreshing thing for me because it wasn't my job. It was like something yeah. fun for me. But of course, I'm crazy. So I'm kind of like turning it into my job instead of a passion <laughs> because it started off with like just me being passionate about watching stand-up specials. And yeah. then I was like binge watching them. And then I was just like... I think the moment that I decided I wanted to do it was because I felt jealous of Chris Rock. And I was like, that's like, I, uh, yeah. yeah, I get that where you're like that me, <laughs> me should be, I should me yeah. Chris Rock like, now. It's not like I, I watch a movie and feel jealous of Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Like I just watched the movie and I'm like, Oh, that was a good act. But when I was like, why am I jealous of Chris Rock? Like, this is weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's to me, that was a sign that I needed to do it. And, um, so the first year I was like binge watching and then the second year I was writing and binge watching yes. and then I did it in 2020. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, no better time, honestly. <laughs> it really, I mean, what, when the stakes are literally the lowest because no one expects, I mean, it is, it's the lowest stakes. Like, you know, you start in, in complete obscurity. Yeah. Now you're starting in such an obscurity that like it, this, it's outside and it's just, you know. How did it feel going from someone who got to start when it was good and then having to degrade to this? Level. The grade. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's interesting. Yourself. I will say it has been somewhat transformative for me in terms of some things that I've learned. Because number one, um, my biggest issue I always had was I just didn't think I was at the level where I wanted to be. And I don't think I am now, but there was a, a clear gap of where I think I should be and a, yeah. where I'm currently at in my like writing and performance. I'm like, why is that? Yeah. But because there is like this kind of romantic ideal of the comedian of like going out every night and you're gonna Shit, and yeah. you're going to and you're gonna grind as hard as you're gonna do as many shows as you can. And that's great. Yeah. But the problem is I did not have the writing behind enough it. Enough jokes yet. It wasn't even enough jokes. I I was constantly coming up with new material. The problem was I was starting at 29 and a half so i was like okay i have to be good but i also have to be original because i'm starting a little bit you know like the the gun went off and i was tying my shoes and everyone got a little bit of a head start yeah so i'm like all right i have to kind of do two things at once so i was worried about being original and good but i was focusing on the original i was like i'll figure out how to be good yeah no, <laughs> that is not, that's not how that works. Yeah. You can't just be like, I'll learn to swim, but I just need to make sure I have the best bathing suit on. Yeah. And then you jump in with the best bathing suit. Yeah. You're not going to know how to swim. You're going to drown. Yeah. And that's, and it took me until the pandemic to realize that. And I was like, all right, well now I have time. I mean, at first it d- I didn't do anything right away in like March. It was like March, April. I was doing Uber Eats. I got laid off from a job like one week before. You didn't before. get laid off from Uber Eats, did you? Because that's like impossible. N- that is impossible <laughs> unless you like Don't feel bad. Poison- I'm door dashing right now to make extra yeah. money because like I'm teaching lessons, but I'm just like, yeah. I'm moving out soon into a new apartment and I'm like, shit, I need extra money right? now. So, so I've been like driving over New Jersey. I get Anyways, that. go on with what you were saying too. So uh, 
I got laid off like right before, like one week before the pandemic. They're like, yeah. I'm like, my whole world's crumbling down. And the next week's like, we'll follow. It's like, great. Okay. <laughs> so let's all do this together. So I was Uber eating for two months. And then they're like, hey, you got laid off. You can get $600. I'm, like, I'm going back home. <laughs> and so I went back home. And uh, and then I spent a lot of like half of April and May. I would, I would say most of May just kind of in bed because I wasn't doing anything. And That's I had like got, and I gotten laid off in 2018 just as I was starting comedy. And that I remember being realizing like, oh, you just don't have a purpose right now. And so I tried to correct it as fast as I could. And so I got into, I did a writing, uh, I did like a screenwriting course yeah. from Second City that helped me get back into, all right, now I'm writing. And then I found this group. And by found, I kind of knew about this group because one of the things I was looking for as I was going through my comedy journey was looking for comedy podcasts, yeah. specifically about the craft and how like you comedy, do it. Yeah. And there was a couple that, that I liked. There was one that I really liked but has kind of died yeah. in, in this whole process just because the hosts live in New York, but they're not from New York, so they kind of yeah. went home and they're not together. But there's been this one guy down in Atlanta named Joel Byers, and he has a podcast called Hot Breath. Interviews Hot comedians. Breath. That's what he chose. <laughs> I want to find a name for my podcast too, because right now I just call it Pranzada, because that's like my yeah. Instagram name. But I'm like, I want like a catchy little. Thing. Yeah, I just I wrote review in progress for my review in progress. I, I didn't know that was the name. I thought that was actually like you were reviewing. No, it. no, that is the name because it just it was one of those like it was a last. It was kind of like I put it together really quick in my yeah. head, and and then I reformed it as I was getting it all set so up. Funny, I thought it was like literally like saying like this is in progress, but that's actually really smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was like, I'm gonna review you my particular creative journey yeah so i'm gonna review it while it's in progress that's smart that's yeah. really clever so um thank you you know i, yeah. I write um <laughs> uh and so he has a podcast called hot breath interviews comedians and because he was also a comedian himself yeah he you know he had nothing to do so what he did was something he tried like years ago mm -hmm. uh on his what was then his like podcast fan page yeah which is now kind of turned into its own it's called the comedy uh, writers room or workshop mm -hmm. where every morning 10 a.m one word uh prompt and you write for 10 minutes and you write a joke oh shit that's like that's a good strategy. and that has been one of the most transformative things in my writing since that it was just that plus rereading books and and some you know courses that i had that i just never really had the time to give yeah to understand like this is how you write a joke and man i came out and people were like you came back with jokes i'm like i know because i i, I didn't even want to be like that false humble like really thank you so much i was like no i put in the work while i there's was there's nothing wrong with like owning up like yeah. you know like owning up when you feel like you've accomplished something yeah. like when i first started playing piano i didn't think i was very good and i didn't have the confidence to say i was good but like once i got to a level where i was like no i worked my ass off i studied like yeah. just like thank you you know yes. it just like feels good to take the compliment in those situations i do have a question for you so you mentioned you started comedy when you were 29 i'm 32 and yes. starting do you f this is how i'm I feel. also 32 oh so. you're 32 wow yeah, that, so. this is so weird i i'm gonna tell the audience right now or the people on youtube him and i are living like parallel lives we have parallel <laughs> cats i'm probably gonna edit pictures of our parallel cats yeah. uh, we're the same age and doing comedy late in life so that's pretty funny later i wouldn't yeah. say there's some people who start later but i was gonna I, ask you do you feel like a pressure i do i yeah. don't know how you feel about it do you feel a pressure like oh shit i'm 32 like i have to hustle there's it's all over when i'm 40. Uh,